Mr. Elmer, what do you consider the biggest priority for the Polish presidency? Um, first of all, I would like to say that this is a very symbolic place where we are in here because um, um, not more than 20 years ago our transformation started and also our stock exchange started 20 years ago and today we are in the middle of the of the financial market, in the heart of the financial market, talking about our not only membership in the European Union but also taking over the presidency. And one of the um, main priorities is the economic growth because uh, today Europe um, uh, should uh, Europe has learned the lesson from the uh, from the economic and financial crisis but today we have to think about the future and we have to be sure that the internal market and the market that uh, all member states countries create is something that we have to protect but also we have to develop and we have to benefit on growing and enla enlarging this, uh, this market um, and this is the second of our priority, to keep uh, really good relationships with our neighbors, not only on the eastern part, so you know about uh, the, the idea of um, eastern partnership, uh, but also about our southern partners, uh, southern neighbors. On the uh, 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 Allow me to talk, ask you a question about economic growth at the moment. You're not only a member of the EU, you're not only holding the EU presidency, but you're also an economy that's growing at an annual rate of 3.5%. One of the the biggest growing economies in the European Union. What can other countries learn from Poland? Well, I think that, uh, yes, uh, uh, Poland is the only country in the European Union that uh, did not face the, uh, the recession. And today, after the first quarter, we have 4.4 plus GDP. I think that um, um, uh, you have to control the economy, you have to control your finance. And um, uh, debt t uh, our debt to, um, to GDP today is below 55 percent, which is uh, which is controlled. I, and I think this is also the lesson for other countries that you have to you have to monitor and you have to control. And it's it's the most difficult thing when the crisis uh, uh, is around. So um, this is the main lesson that that we have learned, and this is the lesson that we should share with other countries. Keeping your budget deficit under control is ingrained in the Polish constitution. Not many, I think. No other European Union country has that in its constitution. Does that help in keeping your economy healthy? Oh, absolutely. And this level, which comes from the constitution, uh, made us uh, not only control, but uh, keep uh, much below 55%. Um, and I think uh, we were not only lucky, but uh, th that was the wisdom that uh, we put into, the, into, in, into our legislation. Um, because, you know, when the crisis comes, uh, you are not always prepared how to control control your, uh, your finance uh, and uh, this constitutional um, um, level helped us. As you mentioned, European uh, enlargement is one of the other issues on the agenda of uh, the Polish presidency. Of course, Croatia's membership is looming in 2012. Uh, is Poland really enthusiastic also about the prospects for Ukraine as a member of the European Union? Well, Ukraine is our, uh, is our neighbor, uh, uh, neighbor country, so uh, we believe that we will uh, finish the, the, the partnership agreement with Ukraine and uh, of course we uh, have to think about uh, benefits of enlarging uh, the potential markets because uh, don't, uh, let's don't forget that Ukrainian market is a huge market so this is the market for our investments this is I mean for European Union investments for European Union uh, services uh, products to be sold so enlarging the markets is absolutely something that we have to think about. Former French President Valéry Giscard d'Estaing last week here in Brussels said that literally we should stop enlargement because the European Union is uh, organization-wise not ready for so many countries as a member. How does Poland see such a statement? Well, I think that um, we should think about our future. So um, wisdom is something that we have to take into consideration about thinking about enlargements. And um, uh, 
um, uh, enlarging uh, the market means that uh, we put uh, reg European regulations, re European Union rules. So it means that we uh, make uh, today other markets more familiar and more close to cooperate with. So I think that uh, this is the, the, the biggest benefit for uh, making other countries uh, more friendly for our investments. Economic partnership is ultimately what it's all about then in the European Union. Uh, economic partnership, uh, economic partnership with other countries, but uh, if we are talking about partnership, Eastern partnership is something uh, even more than um, only thinking about enlarging European Union. This is uh, the partnership with countries uh, that might be also interested in uh, cooperation. In um, September, in Poland, we are going to host the Eastern uh, partnership, partnership Summit, and not only the political uh, issues are going to to be uh, taken and discussed, but also we, for the first time, we uh, organize a business forum, uh, which would go as the site event of the um, Eastern Partnership. So this is the, the platform that um, uh, business from Eastern countries and business from European Union countries may talk together. Because, you know, uh, business uh, doesn't need borders. If, uh, there is a, if there is a free market, if there is a market that, uh, and and opportunities, then business uh, will grow. When you talk about the Eastern Partnership, you also talk about Belarus, your neighbor. What do you think needs to be done about the, the protests and the, the crackdown on the opposition in Belarus at the moment? What, what does Poland want to achieve? Well, I think uh, that uh, we are very clear about uh, about the, the, the regime. And um, uh, as long as uh, this situation uh, is going to last, we are not going to support and we are going to um, be against uh, um, uh, any type of um, financing or uh, supporting a regime because uh, it is against uh, um, any rules that are acceptable in the in the in the modern uh, and uh, today world. Mr. Almark, thanks very much. Thank you.